Hi boys and girls, Brucey here again. Today I'm going to be giving you another tutorial. Um, today it's a guitar creativity tutorial and here it's just giving you options which hopefully will inspire you and, and open your mind to new ideas and also help you improve some of your fretboard knowledge as well. So um, based on a previous tutorial I did which is about using very very small chord shapes so trying to find the smallest ways to play chord uh, progression so let's say you've got a um, we're going to do a one six four five which would be we can play it that way We've got a much bigger but what I like to do is to try and find very very small ways of playing the same thing so I've got my CC there and then I can go to any minor these exercises also help you do is uh, figure out well, really learn the notes on the neck and help you figure out where things are on the fretboard and your note names which is really really helpful so um, today I'm going to expand on that and, and give you an idea of using quite open voices you know we have our standard voices we use but today I'm going to look at maybe doing something that a piano might player might do uh, which is kind of quite wide voicing so I'm gonna and also some inversions here so I'm gonna have a start here with an E oh no not that's not an E I'm going to start with the C here and I'm gonna play an E here so um, I'm gonna play the G here that's gonna be my chord voicing so that's um, 10 on the D string which is a C I've got eight on the B string which is an uh, G and then I've got 12 on the E string which is an E and I'm not playing the G string at all so there's my um, quite a nice little um, C chord there non-traditional voicing perhaps the next thing I'm going to do is go to the A minor so what's my A minor so all I have to do is move that G to an A so that an A is on the 10th fret of the B string, so go. So I've got an inversion of my A minor chord there. Sounds a little bit different, but it's quite a nice voicing. Now I need to go to an F, so what are the notes of my F chord? That's F, A and C, so I've got my C here already, I've got my A here already, so I, my E, move it up a fret. And then to a G, so I could play my G here, but actually I'm going to keep with the voicings I've been using, so I've got my F now I'm playing here. So to go back to a G, what's the notes of a G chord? Well it's B, or G, B, D. So if I slide that down there, I've got my B there in the bass. Very similar to my opening voicing, I've got a B, G, D. So let me play that all. very very tiny voice leading style um, chord progression there which gives something which is very different than just going in and playing nothing wrong with playing that at all but um, if you get into a studio style environment or a writing style environment or you're playing with the rest of a band how great is it to have a whole variety of different options you could play and by playing things up here you're staying in your own kind of zone you're not interfering with the bass uh, which may be entering this end or the keyboard which it might be in the kind of frequency range playing chords in that kind of range here you're kind of in your own zone quite high up playing quite nice wide open chords add a bit of delay or something and it's going to sound lovely um, or even arpeggiator the other great thing about this is like I said it really helps you to know learn your note names it helps you to learn the notes of the chords what makes up the chords but it also gives you the, the, the ability to embellish things So 
So just by sticking around that area, using those cords, you've got a nice little embellished part as well, completely made up. That was just made up on the spot there. So there you go, small voices, voice leading, and learning the fretboard knowledge. I hope that was useful. Enjoy.